Hi guys, Matt from Oars. So with a little bit of time on my hands, it was time to start looking for a car to buy that I could fix up, add some value to, and possibly double or treble the car's value. As with always, I was not going to be buying the car that already looked in showroom condition and something I couldn't add value to. I was looking for a car that needed a little bit of work and looked a little bit rough around the edges, but something I could fix and give a new lease of life to. After looking at several different makes or models, I decided the model I was going to try and buy was a Volkswagen Golf. The main reasons being there was plenty of full supply and there was a great possibility to add value to one needing work. After a little research I determined that they were changing hands for between 2,000 and 4,000 euros for cars in good condition with no issues. This would mean that I would have a target of 1,500 or less buying price in order to spend money on repairs and still leave a good margin when I sell. The first car that caught my eye was this silver Golf. As one of my favourite things to see, the owner had taken poor pictures, which meant that the majority of people keep scrolling, so the chances are they haven't even received a call about the ad yet. In the ad it stated that the car had a starter issue, which sometimes stopped the car from starting. I called the owner and said I wanted to view the car as long as there was some wiggle room in the price for the repairs, which he agreed. On viewing the car it looked as if the car had been parked up for a long period, which the owner informed me he'd stopped driving it because of the starter issue in fear he would be stuck somewhere. The car also had a number of issues including door handle missing, buckle wheel, as well as scratches and a missing grill in the front bumper. After a quick test drive I decided I was willing to take the risk and try and buy the car. The asking price was €1300 Euro, so I offered 800 with the hope that the owner would accept 1000 for the car, which he did. As soon as I got the car home, the first thing I was really eager to do was wash the car. The car to me appeared not to have been washed in at least a year. It was covered in tree sap and felt rough to touch, so the first step was to give it a blast of snow foam and wash. It was quite satisfying watching a year's worth of dirt wash off and it also gave me a good baseline to improve the paintwork later and now it was time to tackle the car's mechanical woes. The start was sitting just above the car's gearbox so I needed to remove the air box and also some of the air ducting to get better access to the starter bolts. With the airbox now out of the way, my worries about access eased as I could easily see the bottom and top bolts for the starter and now it was just a matter of disconnecting the battery and the starter would easily come out. With the last two bolts out I removed the starter, wrote down any part numbers I could see and ordered a replacement. The major I saw on this car in my opinion was the wheels, with one of them being buckled and paint missing on the other wheels, they needed to be changed. That night I went online looking for a new set of wheels for the car and I came across this set that looked a bit worse for wear but there was something I could restore and add value to the car. The wheels were in my local area and were cheap at €120 Euros for a set so I messaged the owner and asked to view them. The wheels looked very rough on appearance and to the untrained eye looked like scrap but with the tyres being in good condition I knew I could sand and paint these wheels to give them a new lease of life. The owner wasn't budging on the 120 price so I agreed to pay it and loaded up the wheels and headed back home. Next job on the list was the door handle. The previous owner said a mechanic previously had fitted a door handle but it was always loose and when it came off he put it in his shed and then it got thrown out. I tried for 40 minutes to fit the handle but no matter how much I tightened the retaining bolt the handle would not tighten and was loose in the door. The only option I had left was to remove the door skin to see what the issue was or if something was missing. found the reason the handle never been able to tighten properly as a bracket had fallen down when somebody was working on the handle previously. So with the bracket positioned back behind the handle mechanism I began to reinstall everything in the hope that it was fixed.
With the handling stall and working again, it was time to tackle the scratch on the front bumper, which I felt really let the appearance of the front of the car down. The fact that this scratch is just on the moulding makes it easier to repair, and this is definitely something an average DIYer could tackle. The plan here is to sand away most of the damage using 180 grit sandpaper and then add some body filler to fill in the remaining deep scratches. With the filler dry for 20 minutes, I sanded it down first with 80 grit sandpaper and then with 180 grit. The plan is to get it as smooth as possible before primer. As I've said numerous times before, the key to a good paint job is always in the masking. In fact, sometimes you'll mask for 15 minutes only to spray for 2 or 3 minutes. You're probably asking yourself why I'm not painting the entire bumper, but because it's undamaged there's no point and I already know this silver always has a good match. By drying the paint with a heat gun between each coat, it means this primer will be ready for sanding in about 20 minutes instead of about an hour. After a quick wet sand with 800 grit sandpaper and clean down with some paper towel, this moulding was ready for silver and then clear coat. I will be applying the silver and the clear coat with my spray gun and it's definitely not something to be intimidated by as it's actually easier to spray with a spray gun than a rattle can, so my advice is to just dive in and have a go. Because the prime was a light grey colour it was really easy and straightforward to cover with the silver and in total I applied 3 coats. With the clear coat mixed the last step to get rid of this nasty scratch was to add the shine back. This is really the only step where you can mess up so it's important to be patient and build the clear coat up in layers. With the replacement starter arriving, I was anxious to get it back in the car and see if it sorted the car's temperamental starting issue, which was the main reason I got the car so cheap in the first place. This was really going to be the make or break of whether this car would turn out to be a bargain or whether I'd end up with some random wiring issue which could take weeks to find. To start repair a great success, the next day I started to clean and prep the wheels to get them ready for paint. I used a strong wheel cleaner and a brush to agitate the stubborn areas, but one wheel in particular was quite bad, and it was very difficult to remove the staining left behind from the brake pads. The only way to remove it was to use some red scotch bright with the cleaner, but I definitely don't recommend doing this to your wheels. I did this because I was going to be scuffing up the wheels for paint anyway, and it was the quickest way for me to remove the baked on brake pad, which was definitely from a seized brake caliper. The wheels cleaned up really well and were nearly good enough to put straight on the car, but there was a few small curb marks here and there, so I wanted to go ahead and paint them to make them look new again. The first step was to remove all the tar, and these wheels had quite a lot, and this would be very obvious once painted silver. The best way to paint wheels is on the flat, so I normally prop a ladder between two small tables to leave them at waist height, and this way I can paint them from multiple angles, as it's quite easy to miss areas when painting wheels. The plan with the curb marks is to sand with a sanding block using 80 grit sandpaper until most of the damage is sanded away. Then on the deeper scratches I use a little body filler that I can come back and sand with 180 grit sandpaper later on. With all the scuff marks sanded and remaining deep scratches filled in and sanded, 
I applied some high build primer to fill in any imperfections on the wheels. This primer will need to be wet sanded before the silver. The problem most people have when painting wheels is from the silicone that is in a lot of popular tyre dressing or tyre shines. It will normally cause the paint to have fish eyes, so a good primer is key to ensure a smooth process when painting wheels. The next morning the primer was dry and ready for a wet sand with 800 grit sandpaper. Then I sprayed two coats of silver followed by two coats of clear coat. It was obvious to see on the dash that the car was overdue for a service, so I wanted to give it a service before I sold the car. Servicing your car is definitely something you can do yourself at home. You don't need a lift or any special equipment. The most important thing is that you replace the oil with the correct type, which can be found in your owner's manual, and most importantly that you add the correct amount of oil. In this service I replaced the oil, the oil filter, the air filter, fuel filter and the one people mostly forget, the pollen filter. If you're not confident in doing all this in your first try then I recommend just try changing the oil and oil filter as these are the most important. The process is straightforward if done in steps. First jack up the car, open the oil filter cap, remove the sump stud, remove the oil filter, sump stud plug back in, filter back on, then fill with oil. If you are selling a car the first thing that buyers like to do is open the hood to have a look inside and most of them don't even know what they are looking at but it presents so much better when they do if the engine bay is looking oil free and clean so I spent 5 minutes giving the engine a quick clean with some WD-40. With all the mechanical issues fixed it was onto the exterior of the car. The paintwork had a number of problems including unusual black staining on the roof that the wash didn't remove white handprints all over, which is from sunscreen, and also a number of stone chips. Buffing a car is what turns just an average looking car into something that looks straight out of the showroom. At uh, one pass of the buffer, it can make old faded paint look like the day it was new. I proceeded to buff the entire car, which in total only took me about one hour, but I will show you some before and after pictures soon to show how big a difference it can make. When I was washing the car, I tried to remove these black spots, but they wouldn't shift, so I thought I was going to have to paint the entire roof of the car which considering I don't have a spray boot, I really wanted to avoid, but luckily the buffing was the fix. So here's a few photos of the before and after, and as you can see it was well worth doing, and I removed all the black staining on the roof, so that was a success in itself. There was also a number of stone chips on the front of the car, and because I had plenty of silver left over, it was a no brainer to go ahead and touch in any chips on the car, and as you can see it made quite an improvement. With the wheels now looking really good, I sprayed on some tyre shine, Refurbing these wheels were a fraction of the cost of new wheels, and in my opinion looked just as good. With that I jacked up the car to bolt them on, and at the same time gave the brakes a quick inspection, which were all good. These wheels hopefully will make the difference between someone stopping scrolling or just moving on to the next car. With more evidence of the car being parked up, I cleaned the rusty wheel nuts and bolted on the new shiny alloys. So after a week's worth of jobs on this car, it came down to the final task. The interior was definitely in need of a major clean. I'm certainly not an expert when it comes to interior cleaning, but I do know how to get an interior looking very presentable for sale. You can have an excellent looking exterior on a car and have a grubby interior, and lose a potential buyer as soon as they sit in the driver's seat, so it's crucial to get the interior up to par with the exterior. Normally the worst area in any car is the driver's seat, and it's always where I start. I like to clean the door pattern first, then the outer parts of the door, then I move on to the footwell and then I switch to clean the driver's seat fabric, which I find the most difficult. A little tip for cleaning seat fabric is to give the seats a clean only concentrating on the stains, then let this dry for at least a few hours, then when you go back you can see if the stains have reappeared as when they are wet they can appear to look clean. There's a lot of expensive car cleaner products out there on the market, but you really don't need to buy them. In the past when I started cleaning my own cars, I just used household cleaning products and as long as you stay away from products containing bleach they normally work just fine. I can't count how many times vanish for carpet stains help me remove stubborn stains on my car interior. So with one final wash it was time to add up what we had spent on this car and see can we achieve a 3000 selling price. So the buying price was a thousand mainly it was so cheap because of the starter issue. The starter cost 80 and was very straightforward to fit. The next thing we purchased was the wheels and they were a bargain at 120. Then we had the door handle at 30. The car was in desperate need of a full service so I changed all filters and oil costing 120. Finally we had the paint for the scratches, the grill, 
for the front bumper and a few small miscellaneous which I'll put down at 50. So that left a grand total of 1400. So as I said at the beginning of the video, the research showed that these cars in good condition are trading from between 2000 and 4000. And I think this car is now in excellent condition with no issues and fully serviced for a new owner to drive for many years to come. So I took some good quality photos of the car and I also wrote a detailed description of the car and how it has just been serviced. I didn't want to be too greedy with the price and also I didn't want to hold this car for multiple weeks so I listed the car for 3250 or nearest offer. I didn't have to wait long for a potential buyer to show serious interest in the car. They asked a few questions through messaging and then asked if they could view the car the next evening. They also asked if I could hold the car until the next day but my top tip is to never agree to do this as 9 times out of 10 they will not show up and you will have wasted a day and lost potential customers. The next evening they arrived, they viewed the car, test drove it and offered 3100 which I expected a lower first offer so I gladly accepted and the car was gone from my driver so that gave a fantastic profit of 1700 euros. So I hope I showed you guys that you can add some serious value to any car by doing some of the work yourself. There's bargains out there, you just need to go on to the classifieds in your town or city and you can do the same. That's it for me, I hope you enjoyed the video and see you soon.